What is the evil day in Ephesians 6.13? What is the evil day in Ephesians 6.13? So turn there with me if you would. Now in Ephesians 6.13, I'm going to read the verse and uh, I'm going to ask you a question, I guess. Um, so we'll get the music ready. Ephesians 6.13. I didn't tell her beforehand, you know. I just feel like, look, part of the job is you learn on the fly. You just go with the punches, you know, you roll with things. Ephesians 6.13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So Ephesians 6 talks about the whole armor of God. And it talks about the evil day. And what we're going to do when we play the music is I want you to guess. I want you to tell me what is the idea that people have about what the evil day means? 13. I have no rhythm. Um, here's what people will sometimes do. When they think about the evil day, they'll say, well, I know what the evil day is. The evil day is the 70th week. Now, I want you to do one little search with me here. So let's pull up our old friend, Blue Letter Bible, and let's run evil day, and let's see what it comes up with. And so it's going to think through this, give us some results, but let's see what the scriptures tell us about the evil day. It'd be interesting if there was a definition specifically as to what it was. So we're going to run Evil Day, and let's see what we get. So Blue Letter Bible is processing here. Okay, so 46 times in 22 verses, but there are two that are direct hits. So Ephesians 6, 13, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. That's the verse we just read. But what's fascinating is there's another that says the evil day, Amos 6, 3. And so what some people do is they grab that and say, aha, I have found the clear cross reference for the evil day. It's in Amos 6, verse 3. Ye that put far away the evil day. Well, I know what that is under the prophetic program. The prof what the evil day under the prophetic program has to be what? What's the evil day under the prophetic program? It's got to be the 70th week. And so what people then do is they say, okay, Ephesians 6, you're given the whole armor of God so you can withstand in the evil day. The evil day is defined in Amos 6, and it, it's under the prophetic program, so that's got to be a reference to the 70th week. Now, I'm not telling you I believe this. I'm telling you the, the rationale, the thinking that some have when they come to this verse. Go back with me to Amos 6, if you would. Go to Amos 6. And what we're going to do here is, uh, I've, I've told you this before, but one of the things you can do is you can highlight Amos 6 and right-click on it, and you can pull it up so that you can look at the verse and look at the context. Now, what I just did when I told you the, the thinking that people have about it, if you were paying attention to my logic, you noticed that it was... Uh, I made some assertions that I didn't prove. And one of those assertions I didn't prove was that the evil day, well, that has to be the tribulation because this is, uh, this is in the prophetic scriptures. Now, I want you to read something here. Let's go up to Amos 6, verse 1. Woe to them that are at ease in where? Zion. And trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. Pass ye unto Kalna and see, and from thence go ye to Hamath the Great, then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Be they better than these kingdoms, or their border greater than your border. Now Amos talks about judgment that is going to come upon the nation of Israel that was impending at the time of the Old Testament. That evil day there is not a reference, I don't believe, to the 70th week, and it is definitely not a reference to the body of Christ. It has nothing to do with it. Was the body of Christ even revealed in Amos 6, verse 3? It wasn't. So get with me, if you would, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. 
So what I'm showing you there, and what I, what I want you to notice is this. You always have to pay attention to context. We ran Evil Day. We found another thing that said Evil Day. Well, that must be a perfect hit. I can, I can go with that, right? Because it says the same thing. Well, you got to think more carefully than that. So watch this. I'm going to scroll down here and, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there's two of these that are verbatim the same, but there's a bunch of other verses about days that are evil. Maybe I should pay attention to those as well. So look with me at Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. Oh, that's interesting. So apparently there's more than one evil day, isn't there? And in the context of Ecclesiastes 12, the evil days are a reference, it seems, to not the days of youth, but the older days are described as evil days. And just to state the obvious, if you think through the timeline of history, are there various evil days? And the answer is, obviously, there are. So be, be careful and be comprehensive. When, when you, you study something, look at, at all the relevant cross-references. Now, I want to show you one thing, and this is just absolutely fascinating. So we saw, uh, well, notice what I did here. You see how I ran Evil Day there? I found the, the perfect cross-reference, the Evil Day in Amos 6.3. I didn't run it with the wild cards, did I? So now let's rerun this with the wild cards. So I'm going to put an asterisk after evil and an asterisk after day. So let's see what it comes up with now. So it's going to think through this. And if you recall, the verse we're trying to explain is Ephesians 6.13. Is Ephesians 6.13 saying that we're going to go into the 70th week? So now we've run evil and day with the asterisks, and now there's 101 times in 45 verses. So we got a bunch more hits, don't we? I'm not going to go through all of them, but I want to show you one thing that's just absolutely fascinating. So if we scroll down here, we get to Ephesians 5.16. Now, here's a tough question for you. How far away from Ephesians 6 is Ephesians 5? And the answer is not very much, right? So if you're trying to understand the context of Ephesians 6, 13, where it talks about the evil day, Ephesians 5 would be pretty relevant. Ephesians 5, 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So in Ephesians 6, 13, is it saying there's one evil day and it happens during the 70th week and the body of Christ is going to go into the 70th week and you need the armor of God so you can withstand in that? No, no, no. It's not saying that at all. What it's telling you is, guess what life is like on the earth? The days are evil. There's just going to be problems in life, right? And what we need to do, by the way, is redeem the time because the days are evil. Think about this with me, if you would. It's easy to, to spend your life, to spend your time in things that don't accomplish much. The vast majority of humanity, unfortunately, does that. I'd encourage you to think about your life this way. If you're saved, you're going to heaven, period. You can't lose your salvation. You have it. You're going to be there forever. So what do you do with the rest of your life? So do you need to spend your time that you have here acquiring new stuff? I mean, I guess you need to have what you need to live on, but should your pursuit in this life be, I need more things, they're going to melt away and dissolve with a fervent heat, right? In other words, I want to acquire more kindling. I want to acquire more stuff that I cannot take with me. Well, that would be a total waste of time. But if you instead redeem the time, in other words, let me figure out how to use my moments to preach the gospel, to witness to neighbors, to lead a Bible study, to study the word, to, to do the things that advance the cause of Christ as best I can. See, what's happening right now, and you've seen this, if, if you have access to the internet, which you do because you're on Facebook, what's happening on Facebook? What's happening on the internet right now? Well, it's full of panic. It's full of 
wild theories that are not based in fact. It, it's based upon all sorts of political speculation. And what I will just tell you is, you're not going to change that. If, if you think that you're going to change the course of this world, you're not going to change the course of this world because the course of this world is set by the prince of the power of the air. You're not going to be able to change that. But what you can do is in the personal time that you have, in the days that are given to you, what you can do is you can spend that for the cause of Christ. And that's what we need to be doing. So in Ephesians 6, verse 13, the evil day is not a reference to the 70th week. It's not a reference to the Great Tribulation. The body of Christ is not going through the Great Tribulation. It's a reference to the fact that you're going to have some evil days. You're going to have some bad days in this life because you live on a sin-cursed earth where Satan is the god of this world.